ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sam Roberts Wrestling Podcast. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. Welcome back to Sam Roberts Wrestling Podcast, not Sam Wrestling, the whole deal. Daniel Bryan, it's been, it's really interesting. I feel like every time we talk, I mean, I guess with you, for some reason in the last several years, every time there's a chance to talk to you, you're on like uh, some big life milestone or something huge and, and dramatic is in the process of happening or whatever it is. Last time we talked, we were going down like uh, percentages of chances that you would be back wrestling, that you would be back in WWE, that you'd be back in somewhere else. Like you had this whole mathematic scheme planned out. And then it kind of seemed like leading up to WrestleMania, you got the news that you'd be back and then went right back in, in, a, in a bit of a whirlwind. Is that kind of how it happened? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I found out so I had done this media tour. I did uh, the Bahrain Comic Con, the first Comic Con in Bahrain, <laughs> uh, on a, on a Friday. I went and did the Special Olympics on Ab- in Abu Dhabi on a maybe it was on a Saturday, and then it was a Special Olympics in Abu Dhabi on a Sunday, and then flew from there to Dallas, Texas. And right before I flew, they told me, "Hey, we're going to fly you to Pittsburgh to do to meet with Dr. Moon and some doctors." And so I had like an inkling that something was up. So I went, flew to Dallas from Dubai, which is a long (laughs) flight, uh, to Dallas, Dallas to Pittsburgh, met with doctors, was there for several hours, and then uh, got the news I was cleared, and then they made the announcement the next day. And then the next day I was getting punched in the face. So I mean, so like, (laughs) I I guess, but I guess that's part of the lifestyle, because in my head I'm going... I don't understand how you have time to process like this thing that has been eating away at you for two years plus. Like it's it's all you've wanted to do, and it's been a source of frustration and anxiety and all this stuff. You've got about thirty six hours from the time uh, that you find out that it is really going to happen to the time that it's happening. But at the same time, no, like- no, 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 it's much less. <laughs> it's much less. So I found out I was cleared. Yeah. At nine thirty p.m. on the Monday. Smackdown Live. Oh my God! What goes on at, at 8 p.m. So it was less than 24 hours. So you're talking about about 22 uh, I getting, hours. I I was getting punched. I was getting punched in the face. Probably 20 tw- in 24 hours and 15 minutes after I found out I was cleared. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess is I I suppose that's best case scenario. It kind of feels like they go, okay, Brian, you wanted this so badly. Fine, here it is. We're we're doing it. Like. We, yep. That had to be due to the, like you're train. You must have been training for a return the entire time you were out, just in case. No, I wasn't. So then, so how I do you just doing, jump like, back in? I, well, so I so I I train all the time, like as far as like uh, like so I'll do a little bit of jujitsu and kickboxing and stuff, but I always work out just because that's something I enjoy doing, mm-hmm. and so. And cardio, it's interesting. Cardio has never been an issue for me. Like, uh, I was talking about it with some of the guys in the locker room. Uh, so when you get really exhausted in a match, it's called getting blown up. Right. right? So the point where it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so blown up, Hello? right? Mm-hmm. I, I've, gotten, I've gotten blown up twice in my entire career. <laughs> <laughs> there's, only, there's only two times. One was in 2003. I was wrestling Paul London in a 40-minute match. And uh, I had gotten up to 210 pounds because I was really trying to put on weight. And I was just like, and then shortly after like the 25 minute mark in this match, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the other was like a completely opposite scenario where I was, uh, I had just gotten signed by WWE after being on the independence for 10 years. And they just, I had just sat at home and they didn't tell me anything that was up and it was around Christmas time. Right. And so like I was, I was training really hard with my jujitsu and kickboxing and working out and stuff like that. But then I went home for Christmas and I was like, certainly they're not going to call me to the raw after Christmas. And so I was just eating nothing but like junk food and just like (laughs) the worst diet possible. And then they bring me to TV and I did a five minute match with Chavo Guerrero and I was exhausted. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, those are the those are the two times in my life I've ever been tired. But no, yeah, I've I've never really had to worry about conditioning or anything like that. So, well, that travel experience is probably the other thing that's like you know what? Even though I'm not wrestling and I'm not wrestling for the foreseeable, I can't just sit around and eat eating junk food because this isn't like I'm not God given. Like if at some point yeah. I decide to just sit around and eating eating junk food, it'll all go away. Yeah. Well, and it's just like it's to me more so. I think uh, more so, and I'm really in the process of this now. I had gotten really small, more than more than like gaining on. Get, uh, I had gotten down to 175 pounds, which was lighter than is around the same weight I was when I had graduated high school. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, because my body just feels better at that weight, right? Like without care, like I was running three and a half. Uh, th three and a half to five miles a couple times a week on top of doing jujitsu and lifting and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And so that's a, that's probably more of my natural body weight is 175. And so it, it was more like, Oh no, I'm going to be too skinny. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at what point do you get to sit down and say, Oh my God, like this is happening. I'm back. This thing that I was waiting to happen for years is happening. Is it, after that first SmackDown where you actually, because like for me as a fan watching, and I think a lot of fans felt the same way, at first when you hear the announcement, it's like, okay, what are they going to do? Are they going to treat him with kids, kid gloves? Is he going to wrestle like once every three months? Is he going to, but when you got hit, it was one thing. But when you did the thing where you're going corner to corner and you're full force doing the drop kicks where you fall back full force on your back and you're, you're going at the pace that you were going two years ago, that was number one, the moment for me that I was like, oh my God, he's, this is just now happening. He's just back. And at the same time, and I think people felt this way for the first couple months that you were back going, no, 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 don't, ooh, is he okay? Is he going to be all right? Is he okay? You know, um, uh -huh. for you, what was that experience like? And at what point did you get to kind of process the fact that this goal had been achieved? Well, so it was interesting because that night when I was doing it, I, uh, there was really a joy, uh, a joy in my heart as I was doing it. Right. Like, yeah. uh, I, I, I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but I feel like if you were to go back and watch it and they're beating me up, you might detect a slight smirk on my face. <laughs> that, like, 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 uh, like, like I'm having a great time. You know what I mean? Like, I can't believe that I'm doing this. Uh, as far as processing it went, it's still, I'm still in the, in the middle of processing it. You know what I mean? As yeah. far as like, um, I feel so grateful to have this thing that I love back in my life. And while also like my home life is better than it's ever been in my, not that my home life has ever been bad, but it's like, I love going home and seeing, seeing Brie and the baby. Right. I love it. Uh -huh. It's like, uh, I love being at home. I love my job. And like to have these two things that you love so much um, in your in your life, like it, it really, you know, I really got dealt a great a great hand of cards. You know what I mean? In this, at least in this moment in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And so so yeah, it's it's more that like I constantly feel that sense of gratitude. Last night. I, we were wrestling in Gainesville, Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, we're doing Orlando tonight. And I got to meet up with my wife last night, right? You know, when I got to my hotel room, and so it's like these these moments of joy where I just uh, wrestled Shelton Benjamin in Gainesville, Florida, which huh. was really really fun. And yeah. Then, uh, then now I'm reunited with my wife, and then tomorrow I'll uh, I get to go go to Washington State for a day, and then. After that, uh, I get to go home and see my baby and my wife and spend five days with them. So it's like I'm constantly looking forward to the like, you know how sometimes you just look forward to, OK, I'm looking forward to this thing, but it's like a ways away. Yeah. Like I'm I constantly within days, I have stuff that I'm really looking forward to, like almost every other day. It's like, oh, man, I can't wait for this or I can't wait for that. And that brings a real sense of joy to my life. That's amazing. Um, do you, are you the type of person, uh, that like is now worried that it, now that it, you've lived through it being taken away from you at a point when, you know, in your mind and in your body, you didn't necessarily think that it should be, you didn't feel like it should be. Do you worry that because it came back so fast at any given moment, it could just go away again? Or are you not that type of thinker? 
No, I don't worry about it, but I'm also more aware of the fact that that's a possibility. And I think that that brings, rather than worrying about it, it brings me more of a sense of joy into what I'm doing. And this idea that like, okay, last night in Gainesville Mm -hmm. could have been my last match, you know, like you always, you have to, you have to keep in mind and that that's the case that last night in Gainesville could be my, it could have been my last match. And so, uh, so really appreciate it, right? Really enjoy being able to go out there and like, who would have thought even like with Shelton Benjamin, right? I wrestled him once, I think in 2010, uh, and he's really good and he's a really fun guy to wrestle. And so it's like, who would have thought that, okay, so if this is, if this happens to be my last match, approach it with a sense of joy. Like, Hey, I'm very lucky to be able to do this, really go out there and soak it all in each night and, and do, do it in a way that you love to do it as opposed to sometimes, when uh before when you get in the grind of being on the road and all that kind of stuff and you just expect things to go on kind of forever it's like okay i'm doing this because this is the way we should do it or because this is what the fans expect or because of this or because of that and the reality is that fans want to see uh something something that they're going to enjoy but i think they also enjoy it when you're out there enjoying it as well you know what i mean oh yeah you can feel it kind of yeah, and so that's uh, so that's kind of a it's just a different approach, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I that that is that should happen. That's probably the healthiest way to look at it. Uh, when we talked last, and you were talking about the hypothetical of you returning, you were talking about the difference between a full schedule and not working a full schedule. And when we talked about WWE, in your mind, you had this idea of of coming back to not a full schedule, uh, which you haven't as of now. I mean, I'm sure. You're still in this whirlwind. I'm using the world word whirlwind too many times, but you're just in this in this <laughs> space of like going match to match and and enjoying it, like you said. But are you still looking at that? Like like I don't know if I want to be back doing a full schedule, or now that you're doing it, are you like yeah, this is what I should be doing? No, so uh, I don't want to do a full schedule, mm-hmm. and I think WWE has been um, has been very gracious in working with me to not do. Uh, a complete schedule and we're and we're just kind of talking like they it's like a it they work with me to be like hey we would really like you to do these shows because you know because these shows you know we need this or that or whatever right but then also giving me time to be at home with my family and you know and also hey there's realistically every time you go out there you're there's a risk right so yeah. mitigating the risk of how many how many times you're going out there and doing something you know what i mean and so uh so like i i like the schedule of about 50 to 100 matches a year it may be end up being a little bit more with wwe just because of the nature of how many shows they run and all that kind of stuff and what you know and the fans and the fans want to see certain people right so it's like yeah. hey we're bringing the smackdown show to this certain place they really they would they really want to see daniel bryan right so it's like okay so it's it's doing that and uh and just kind of finding those those kind of compromises but for example in 2013 i did 227 matches it's ridiculous i have no interest right i I have no interest in ever doing 200 matches again in my career right i just have i have no interest my body doesn't want to do that. I'm 37 years old, man. <laughs> and like, so not only does my body not want to do it, but I don't want to spend that much time away from away from the baby and that sort of thing. And so, so yeah, I, I like they're really working with me on that, and, and I'm appreciative of that. Yeah, I mean, and I don't think people that that don't have kids realize that, especially at the age, because we have kids that are around the same age. Like, you go away for four days, and you come back home, and they've learned like 10 new things out of the blue and oh, you're like, yeah. like this is yeah. how is this going so, this fast one of the most gratifying things to me is because i'm always the one who who leaves and then um when i come back birdie's learned something new uh brie had to go to uh tahoe and you know poor her she had to go to tahoe, like tahoe <laughs> for uh for uh to film for for total divas right and so she was gone for for i think it was about five days and so it was just me uh just uh, one-on-one dad time with, with Birdie. And so I spend a lot of time on the floor with her. And then when Bree came back, uh, so I, I, I'm constantly doing like little amateur wrestling sit-outs and stuff. <laughs> when I came back, 
Birdie was doing amateur wrestling sit outs and, and oh you know, and they're God. just like, they're, they're just little baby spins. But she's doing it. <laughs> Brie goes, oh my gosh, when did she start doing that? And I was like, Friday. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yes. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, it, you know, like, but yeah, things, things change on a regular basis and more so than anything else. What I, more so than missing when she does something the first time, like, I'm afraid more so of uh, being away when and not being able to appreciate the things when she stops doing them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like right now she's she's walking around and she's got that last little bit of, of toddle in mm-hmm. her where her arms – I don't know if you ever watched Rugrats when you were a kid. Definitely. But like Tommy from Rugrats would always waddle in this really weird way. <laughs> and I, I always thought that was funny when I watched it as a kid. But that's actually the way that babies like walk when they're first learning to walk. And so like – Birdie's got the last little bit of that, and now she's starting to walk a little bit more regular. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh I'm really going to miss that. And so it's like enjoying all those little moments that you can. Yeah, and just trying to take 100 videos and get everything like like recorded. So it's like, no, it, this is the way it used to be. And um, No, 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 no. So I'm the opposite. Bree is like that. So you don't take Bree videos? The one who's like, oh, I'm the worst. Because what I do is I'm actually, I don't know if this is bad or if this is good. I enjoy it while it's happening. And my uh, first reaction is not to grab my phone and take a video. My first reaction is like, oh, my gosh, this is just the best. So she started doing this thing where she grabs – we have this little bookshelf for her, and she, she grabs a book. She comes over. She gives it to me, and then she turns her little body around and sits down in my lap. It's the, and yeah. so, like, she does that, and, like, it's just the most adorable thing in the world. Yeah. And – uh, and then so when she started doing it to Bree, because that happened when Bree was gone. And then when when Bree came back and she started doing it, Bree, like when I was on the road, she's like, oh, my gosh, she's doing it to me. Look, here's the video. And I was like, great. That's great that Bree took the video. And then I felt started feeling a little bit guilty, like, wait a second. Am I a bad husband because I didn't take a video and I just like, <laughs> enjoyed it selfishly for myself? <laughs> <laughs> well, before we slip yeah. into full on uh dad talk as as we could easily do yeah um we haven't yeah. talked about uh we, we need to get back to wrestling and we need to get back to video games because you're here to make it some kind of big 2k19 announcement correct i mean if am i doing the announcement right now i don't know what the know i don't know what the announcement is they didn't oh, tell okay, me yeah yeah so, okay so the announcement is is that they're bringing back the uh, 2K showcase mode, which uh-huh. had been gone for a couple of years, and so and the showcase mode is the story mode for me, and it's the story mode throughout my for my career. So you get to play. Wow. So for example, you get to go through the story of my entire uh, WWE career, which starts uh, oddly enough in 2003, where I wrestled as Brian Danielson against John Cena. So like that's how far back that they go. And then you go through these like 12 matches, 12 significant points in my career, including like the NXT stuff where I got brought in after being uh, on the independence for 10 years and then get brought into NXT as Mrs. Rookie, you know, like that sort of thing. They go through the whole thing of me getting fired and then rehired and then, you know, all the way up to like WrestleMania 30, me announcing my retirement. And then the ending part is then uh, my return match at WrestleMania 34. Uh, I just think it's, it's a really cool little, like it's a really cool story. I think it's really fun, but it's awesome for me to be, to be the showcase person and like it end on such a positive note Yeah, because as much as like people think of like WrestleMania 30 as like this career highlight for me, uh, it was from a career perspective, that's probably the highlight. But from a personal perspective, from my career, WrestleMania 34 was something I'm actually more proud of, you know, because that's something I really had to fight for for several years. And showcasing that entire thing on the game, I think, brings that whole story to a new generation of fans. So Yeah, and it's amazing. And I think people forget uh, how much history you have with WWE sometimes. Like uh, at, at Access this year, Mattel was showing off the new action figures, and they showed this uh, Daniel Bryan figure from you when you first showed up on the NXT reality show, but you were wearing an American dragon robe. And I'm like, Bill, I was uh-huh. saying Bill from Mattel. And I was like, you can't, how, how could you have that? And he goes, Nope. He wore the American dragon robe. The first time he was on NXT, we can do it. And I'm like, wow. Right. I, I had no idea that <laughs> he snuck it in. Um, but that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's super cool. And I also think, so one of the things that, 
so you get to play as Brian Danielson, which is also wow. Like, that blows that blows my mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they have different iterations of me and my gear because you know if people have followed me from the independents, I've had a lot of different looks over the years, <laughs> <laughs> and so they have different you know all the different looks that I've had and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I think that's cool. But I was also uh, talking about how AJ Styles is on the cover of the video game, yeah, and how cool yeah. that is for the two of us because it's like you could go on YouTube and if you YouTube AJ Styles versus Brian Danielson, uh, there's this match, I think from, it's maybe from like 2005 or something like that, where he and I are wrestling a match for Ian Rotten in the Midwest somewhere. <laughs> and it's in front of like 70 people and we wrestle 25 minutes or whatever it is. Right. And, uh, and to go from that where you're wrestling in front of 70 people to here we are, in uh, the video game, the biggest video, uh, the biggest wrestling video game in the world, and he's on the cover, and then I'm in the showcase mode. I think that's really, it's really neat and it's really fitting. You know, I think that shows how much wrestling has changed and how much AJ and I have both evolved. You know, as as humans. So I would imagine, based on how happy you say you are, uh, and the fact that this game comes out in October. That, you know, everywhere you go on the internet, you know, when they talk about you, they talk about the fact that your deal's up September 1st and they don't know if he's going to resign and blah, blah, blah. It would seem highly likely that you're resigning with WWE. Uh, yeah, I, I, I declined to comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, that it would be, I, I think at this point, it's like 90. 90 plus percent you know how i like to give i do yeah you like your numbers i love math i'm a big math right so like you know i I would say i would say there's a very it's it's likely i will sign with wwe so Uh, well i'm not trying to i'm not trying to ruin your negotiating either so you don't need to make any uh right yeah 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 don't ruin my nego i mean and the reality is is that like uh you know it's just that's the that's the probability not you know i have not signed I have not re-signed yet, but I mean, it's likely, I mean, it could happen as, as, as soon as the end of this week, it might be a couple more weeks or whatever it is, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very likely. So So the Miz storyline with you is one of the most kind of compelling long-term well-told stories of a match. When you look at the macro of it, right. When you look at it and you, I mean, you talk about the video game, you know, the Miz kind of starts really early in this WWE run and kind of runs here and there throughout uh, in terms of the story of what this match is and could be and everything. Do you think that SummerSlam is the right time to finally, you know, you're back. As soon as you come back, people start listing matches. They want to see Daniel Bryan in. The Miz is, of course, that. And I think, you know, the infamous Talking Smack episode is what really lit the fire on that. Um do you think SummerSlam is the venue for it? Is it something you would have rather seen stretched out and done at WrestleMania, or is that not really something you think about? So, th- so that's beyond my control. So I don't really, I try not to think about it too much. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I, uh, I think that SummerSlam is like to say. <laughs> I've had people say to me like, "Oh, it needs to be saved for WrestleMania." Okay, I could see where you would want it at WrestleMania. But SummerSlam is also a really big event. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's really so tough it's to like, complain about. It, They're wasting this yeah, yeah, at a yeah. SummerSlam. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like uh, it's one it's one of those things where people have said that to me, and and I'm I'm just like I think some pe- sometimes people underappreciate like hey SummerSlam is. I mean, people don't under when you say like, okay, what are the biggest events that WWE runs throughout the year? The three biggest ones by far are SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, and WrestleMania. Those are the three that people have the most interest in. Like, you know, from uh, so so us doing it at SummerSlam in no way, shape, or form is like, uh, do I think like, oh, it should have been done this or whatever? You know, like they, but it's also beyond my control. You know what right. I mean? I uh, I I I am just thrilled to finally be able to punch Miz in the face. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah. Like, if I can just, 
I just want to repeatedly punch that man in the face. Well, so. you know, I think that a lot of fans would like to vicariously live through you doing just that. So I think that it's <laughs> <laughs> it's an ideal scenario for you. Um, you know, when you talk about your WrestleManias, you talk about, you know, as far as poetic WrestleManias, there's not too many people that have more moments than you from, you know, the WrestleMania 30, that was the moment. Even WrestleMania 31, like I think that that's one that people kind of sleep on sometimes, but you winning the Intercontinental title, I think because there wasn't, as much buildup and because it was cut so short, people kind of forget, but it was still a pretty cool moment in that moment. But we'll say WrestleMania 30 and then we'll go back to New Orleans and say WrestleMania 34 as another kind of poetic moment. Is there an ideal, even though it's out of your control, let's say it wasn't out of your control, is there an ideal opponent or situation that you would like to see in this kind of build towards WrestleMania that will be the one year mark in your return this year? Uh, gosh, no. I mean, I haven't even really thought about it. And from that perspective, I mean, it. So I think the one one of the things that's always uh, weird around me is my experience with Royal Rumbles. Right? Yes, of course. And like, and and just my experience, and then what happens because of my experience in Royal Rumbles is just an interesting topic to me. And some people bring it up to me all the time. And so. Uh, so I think that's one of the things that I haven't accomplished is like winning a Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. And then um, so so that would be something that would be uh, an interesting thing is is winning the Royal Rumble and then going on to to be in a championship match at WrestleMania. But the rea there's a reality that there's a lot of things that happen in WWE and things change and what fans want changes. And it's not all it's not all about me. Right. That's yeah. one of the things that that you know everybody you know everybody re it sounds stupid when you say it of course it's not all about you but then like when people are talking about their careers they're like i want it to be like this or i want it to be like that and the reality is it's never going to be all about me right and right. so uh my thing is i don't think about that kind of stuff and enjoy the things that i do get to do right like as far as the like i love I love wrestling. So going out there and being able to just enjoy these matches that I'm having now and really being able to savor wrestling while I can do it. Because one of the things that uh, being forced to retire gave me is the sense of perspective that it can end at any time. And I don't worry about that, but I just like, it really, it really makes me savor every moment. So, and you know, and to be fair, some of the best things in your career have happened from not winning the Royal Rumble. So I don't know if you'd want to upset that trend. Um, <laughs> well, and, 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 and just, just this idea of like, uh, like me pushing for things. Yeah. Like the only thing, the only thing that's happened good when I've pushed for something is me getting cleared to wrestle. Like WrestleMania 30 didn't happen because I pushed for something. It happened because fans pushed for something. Right. right? And so like, I've always had. Uh, for better or worse, I've always had this very happy-go-lucky towards how I'm booked, right? <laughs> I just like, I just like, yeah, yeah, whatever you want. I just go out there and do the best that I can, and yada yada yada. And so, like, at some point, I think I probably need to change that. Uh, and I'm sure I don't at know. some it point, seems fans to... would probably get a get a little bit frustrated with me and be like, "Hey, shouldn't you like want more?" But then that goes, to, <laughs> you know, like you know, my lack of ambition or something or another. So, uh, last question before I let you go. Cause you know, you're busy. Um, do you have any idea what the plan was for you and Shane McMahon? Had you not been cleared? I mean, it is so wild that it was something like the, the you and Shane and the, and the friction and the whatever, none of it makes any sense if you don't get cleared. And the fact is that you get cleared 20 hours before you actually come back, which means that entire run was leading to nothing if you don't get cleared. Is the, Was there anything that you know of that was like a, a safety so, net on that? <laughs> so you say that. It doesn't make a lot – if you were to go back and watch it from week to week, mm -hmm. it doesn't make a lot of sense with me being cleared either. <laughs> 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 so, like, that, so, some, of the, some of the things that happened, and I think that um, – I think it was really just – because from, the, from a writer's perspective, right – they don't like as far as they were told like there's there's not much chance of me being cleared i didn't think there was much chance of me being cleared so i think that they did have a game plan but then in the like maybe a a, a, 
two weeks before I actually got cleared, I had gotten like, I had gotten cleared by some even more people and it was becoming harder and harder to be like, Hey, we can't clear this guy when all the best people have cleared him. You know what I mean? Right. And so it's like, uh, so that, so then it becomes kind of this momentum of, uh, of stuff. And so I think that's like, I, I know that they had a plan and I think the original, I think the main plan was not for me not to be cleared. What that plan was, I don't exactly know. I was hoping that if it wasn't going to be cleared, it was going to involve me being involved where if Shane loses that I lose the GM spot because <laughs> I really didn't want to do it anymore. So that's kind of what I was hoping. For. That's what I, that's what I, that's what I was pitching for, realistically. So, <laughs> yeah, fingers so crossed, that's, loser that's leaves that's town, and I lose. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so well, that, that's kind of that's what I was hoping for, but I didn't. You know, I I'm not in on those meetings or anything. So I don't know what it was. That's amazing. Well, you know, you're one of my favorite people to talk to, and I'm uh, I'm super super excited about uh, uh, going through your career path in 2K19. I think it's 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 pretty perfect to be told over a video game. So I, I can't wait until it comes out. I play them every year, but this is this is actually a story mode that I feel like I'll be fully invested in because I think me, along with a lot of fans, have been fully invested in the real-life uh, story of, of Daniel Bryan and Bryan Danielson. Um, and so I think it's a great choice. Thanks a lot for uh, making the time, man. I appreciate you doing the show again. Yep, thanks very much, Sam. I'll talk to you later. For sure.